But you know what? Even if the powers to be never learn that lesson, Americans can be assured that young Americans like the names <clears throat> on this wall, like Americans in this audience, like Americans all across this great land, will stand proud and fight our country's battles, regardless if it is an unpopular war or not. We will do it. Yeah. Does anyone know what happened on August 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th of 1969? It was Woodstock. And I bring that up because... When Woodstock occurred for those four days, 400,000 so-called hippies reveled in the electric pot dream. But what a lot of people didn't know that during that time, 8,420 miles away in Vietnam, 514,000 young Americans were, to quote Richard Cobb of the v VFW magazine, they were authentically serving the country that had raised them to place society over self. During that four day period in Woodstock, 109 servicemen died in Vietnam. On the last day of Woodstock, 35 Americans died. So when you hear the anniversary of Woodstock, please take the time to think of those 109 Americans who died during that time. You see, they were the unsung heroes. They didn't get the press of Woodstock because they were just young Americans doing what their country asked them to do. There is a book called Offering at the Wall, Artifacts from the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Collection. It's by Turner Publishing. It's copyrighted in 1995. I'll read a couple of excerpts from that book for you. The Vietnam Wall was dedicated on Veterans Day in 1982. The original idea came from a gentleman who was an infantryman in Vietnam by the name of Jan Scruggs. He came up with an idea of some type of monument for Vietnam veterans and for the dead. He initially collected on $144.50. At that time, a comedian publicly mocked him for his inability to collect more money. But he had a dream, he had a vision. And later, millions were raised, and we have the wall. More than 2.5 million people visit the Vietnam Wall each year. But you know, this wall has become not just a monument anymore. It's also become a shrine. In 1995, this book was published, 25,000 offerings, 25 items, 25,000 offerings have been left at the wall. You can only imagine how many have been since then, because this was in 1995. Some of the offerings, they represent, for the most part, private messages to the Vietnam dead. Their memories are known only by the senders. People come to the Vietnam Wall convinced of its mystic ability to heal. They come to sell something, an argument maybe, unspoken words. Maybe it's something they felt they should have said to the person and they didn't. Maybe it's something they wish they had said to the person. A thank you. Or just an expression of love. At first, when all these items started piling up, they didn't know what to do with them. So the park rangers decided what they would do is they had to find something to do with all these artifacts. Some of the artifacts were flags, roses, Letters, teddy bears, toys, playing cards, birthday cards, dog tags, service medals, sea rations, even army issued toilet paper. <laughs> Bibles, boots, bowels, and for some reason the bowels were primarily Jack Daniels and Budweiser. <laughs> Didn't quite figure that one. Again, their meaning. When, the per when people would put these items there, why they were placed there is known only to the person who placed them there. Finally, a lady by the name of Pamela West, the park's regional curator, decided they should be collected, housed, and cataloged. 
We do know that the first offering ever given to the wall was by a young Navy officer in the spring of 1982. Before the wall was even built, he walked up to the trench where the concrete of the foundation was being poured. He stood over the trench for a moment, and he was observed throwing something into the cement. When asked what he was doing, he said he was giving his dead brother's purple heart to the wall. And that was the first offering ever made. I will quickly go over some stats to try to clear up some rumors that you hear about Vietnam. Of all the troops in Vietnam, only 15% of the troops actively engaged the enemy. Drugs. Now, this is a sore spot with me and I'm sure with most Vietnam veterans. If you were to believe the movie Platoon, if you were to believe some of the things you've seen in the press, it made it look like every Vietnam person, serviceman over there and woman was constantly on drugs. All they did was maybe do patrols in the daytime, did drugs all night. I can honestly say in my 13 months and five days in Vietnam, I never seen one person ever take a drug. When it was, the rumors were out that so much people, so many people were involved in it, they decided to start testing people. 1971, they did a test of the troops in Vietnam. The first test, 5.5% of the troops tested positive. The second test, I, got, I guess they got smarter. 1972, only 1 1.5 tested for drugs. So when you hear this about all the drug use, now I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that there was no drug use in Vietnam. We all know that happened. But I can tell you one thing, it was not to the extent and the magnitude that was made out by the media. Another rumor was that Vietnam veterans are irresponsible for a crime wave in the United States. You believe some of the things you read, half the crimes ever committed was by Vietnam vets. In fact, less than 1% of Vietnam veterans ever committed crimes. Another thing was who bore the blunt of the war? That was kicked around. Well, 92% of all Vietnam vets were Caucasian. 8% were African American. 7% had Spanish surnames. One third of all the Vietnam veterans and servicemen came from the South. 92% were under the age of 20. 75% were under the ages, were between the ages of 18 and 22. Now, who had the most people in the service? That's going back and forth. Well, the Army. The Army has 87% of all the troops in Vietnam came from the Army. The Marine Corps had 8%. The Air Force had 4%. And the Navy had 1%. Two-thirds of all the casualties in Vietnam were from the infantry the grounds troops, the soldiers on the ground, the grunts. 84% of everyone who died in Vietnam died from enemy action. 16% died from hostile incidents, non-hostile incidents. Another thing was they were saying, well, the one of the problems with the war, they had all the draftees. Well, 56% of the people in Vietnam were volunteers. 43% were drafted. And I'm sure that every Vietnam veteran can tell you in here, I never could tell the difference between a draftee and a volunteer. A person was a person. They all did their job. These stats, although informative, only have one true meaning to me. That when this country goes to war, they call upon Americans, some in the flower of their youth. When they called for Americans to go to Vietnam, they responded. It didn't matter if they were white, black, brown, red, yellow. It didn't make a difference. It didn't